In the goals-based asset allocation process, the advisor will identify client goals. And of course, from the goals, the advisor will know what is the cash flows required by the client, the time horizon, and the required probability of achieving goals. For this goals-based asset allocation approach, the risk measure is not uh, volatility or standard deviation, rather it is measured using probability of achieving the client's goals. Next, the advisor will match the goals to the portfolio modules. So think of these modules as asset allocations that the advisor uh, have, has already prepared in advance. Okay, so these are the standard solutions that the advisor will use first. Okay, because it's convenient, it's already there, it's just plug and play. But if the advisor is not able to match the goal to any modules that is already uh, in place, then the advisor will have to customize a separate portfolio module for the client. Then the advisor will determine the discount rate or what we call the minimum expectations that is appropriate given the time horizon and the probability of success. So this minimum expectations is not the average return or the median return. Okay, it is a return that is adjusted for time horizon and the required probability of success. Given multiple modules, the advisor will choose the module with the highest minimum expectations. Okay, and uh, if you choose the highest minimum expectations, that module will have the lowest required asset to be invested. Now, once we have identified the discount rate, the advisor will determine the assets needed for the module. And finally, the advisor will allocate the capital to the sub portfolios to construct the portfolio and then combine it into the overall portfolio. The discount rate for each module, which uh, we call the minimum expectation returns, is the expected minimum return earned over a given time horizon, of course, based on the client's goal, and also based on the required probability of success for that goal. So how is this minimum expectations computed? We will make an assumption that the returns are normally distributed. And of course, uh, they are also assumed to be independent and identically distributed. In this normal distribution diagram that we see here, we have the median return or the mean return in the center. And of course, the minimum expectation is to the left okay, of the mean return. Okay, and uh, this shows us that uh, the blue shaded area is the required probability of success of that goal. And the minimum expectation is the minimum return that the module or the portfolio can earn over that time horizon, okay, with this level of probability of success. Now, let's look at an example. So, let's say the client has a goal, and for that goal, the time horizon is 15 years. And for that goal, there is a probability of success of 95%. And let's say we have a given module here, and this module has the expected return of 8.2% per year and a standard deviation of 10.4% per year. Now on the diagram that we saw previously, okay, we have the mean return, we have the minimum expectations return to the left, and 95% is the shaded area. Now to calculate the minimum expectation returns, what we will first need to do is to adjust the expected return and the standard deviation for the time horizon. And bear in mind here that these are the annual expected return and the annual standard deviation. So if I want to adjust it to 15 years, take note that for expected return, okay, so the expected uh, return here will be multiplied or it will be scaled by multiplying by 15, okay, for 15 years. So that gives us a return of 123% over that 15 years time horizon. And for the standard deviation, if you were to scale it to 15 years, remember that for standard deviation, when you scale it, you will have to multiply by the square root of the time factor. So I'll multiply by square root of 15. 
So that is 40.279% for that 15 years. Right, so we have the numbers here. This is 123%. This is 40.279%. So now we need to compute this uh, minimum expectation returns. And since we are assuming a normal distribution for the returns, so the minimum expectation returns will be the mean return for that 15 years horizon minus the Z value, which is a standard normal variable that corresponds with a 95% probability to the right, or we can say there is a 5% probability to the left. So this is the cumulative probability multiplied by the standard deviation of returns for that 15 years time horizon. So what we need to find out is this Z value here, okay, that corresponds with a 5% probability to the left, okay, or the cumulative probability of 5%. You can use a standard normal distribution table, or we can actually compute this uh, using Excel. Now in Excel, we can easily derive or we can easily uh, get this Z value. So what we need to do is just to specify the function. So let's press equals to, and then you will type norm, and then I'll type dot s dot inv. So this is to get the standardized normal inverse variable. Okay, so uh, let's say, okay, yeah, so you have to specify the probability. So you need to specify the cumulative probability, which is uh, 1 minus 0 0.95 or 0 0.05 here. So that's negative 1.645, right? So this is our standard normal variable. So I will round this to three decimal places. So for that, I am going to take the mean, which is 123% minus 1.645 multiply by 40.279%, all right? So that will give us a return of 56.7410%. So let's uh, interpret this number. So this is saying that over a period of 15 years, okay, this module will have a minimum return of 56.741% with a 95% probability, okay, of success a 95% probability of achieving a return that is minimum 56.741%, which means that it, this is the lowest it can be, or it could be higher, All right? Now, uh, this is, of course, for 15 years. Uh, we do not want, it's a bit hard to communicate, so we want to uh, analyze this number. So I need to convert it to a per year number. So what we do is we will take this number and we will divide it by the number of years, which is 15 years. So the minimum expectation returns here will be 56.74100% divided by 15 years, and that gives us 3.7827%. Okay, so that's how you compute the minimum expectation returns. So in the syllabus, uh, the emphasis is not on how to compute the minimum expectation returns, but it's good to have a concept of how it is derived, okay? Because some may misinterpret the minimum expectation returns as the average return or the median return, but it is not. Finally, let's say a client has a goal that in 15 years time, the client wants to have a 95% probability that, the uh, that they will have $20 million for a certain purpose. Okay, it could be for donation, it could be for charity purposes, it could be uh, leaving it to their next generation. So the advisor has proposed five modules to the client. Okay, and of course, the, the advisor will then choose one of these modules and the client will then allocate their capital or their assets to one of these modules. There are five modules here and we have the expected return and the standard deviation. And then we have the minimum expectation returns adjusted for a period of 15 years and with a 95% probability of success. Okay, so here we have the minimum expectation returns. And earlier, we calculated the minimum expectation returns for module C, where the expected return is 8.2% and the standard deviation is 10.4%. Now, among these five modules, which is the which one will the advisor choose? Now, of course, uh, the advisor will choose the module with the highest minimum expectations, okay, which is module D. 
okay, that the minimum expectation is 4.3611%. So the advisor will choose module D as the most appropriate module. So the discount rate here will be 4.3611%. Now sometimes the advisor will call the discount rate as the funding cost. And to see why the advisor calls it that is because that is the amount of assets that is needed to fund the investment in this module. So how much assets is needed to be invested to module D? So based on the amount of 20 million, okay, that is needed in 15 years time. So this is the required future value. So that's 20 million. And based on uh, minimum expectations of 4.3611%, how much assets will the uh, client have to allocate to this module? Okay, so it's a simple present value uh, problem. So we'll take 20 million divided by 1 plus 0 0.043611. You can use your financial calculator. And uh, we will obtain $10.54 million. So in other words, the client will have to allocate $10.54 million into module D. Okay, so that it will within 15 years time, there is a 95% probability that the client will be able to have um, 20 million dollars. Okay, or it could be more. Okay, but that is uh, the minimum probability that is needed to achieve that goal.